Welcome students. In this lecture, I am going to give you information about the pancreas, particularly the exocrine function of the pancreas. Objectives of this lecture is to understand physiological anatomy of pancreas, composition and function of the pancreatic juice, and regulation of the secretion of the pancreatic juice, and the study of various applied aspects related to pancreas, which includes various function tests for the diagnosis as well as various disorders of pancreas. So let us begin. First of all, physiological anatomy of the pancreas. It includes information about various structures in the pancreas that are useful in the physiological functions. So pancreas is an elongated accessory digestive gland. It lies retroperitoneally and transversely across the posterior abdominal wall posterior to the stomach and between duodenum to the right and spleen to the left. Pancreas, it can be divided into anatomical divisions as well as the physiological functions. So anatomical division, it includes various parts like head, neck, body and tail of the pancreas and physiological functions, it divides pancreas into two parts, exocrine pancreas and the endocrine pancreas. Exocrine pancreas, it includes secretion of the pancreatic juice that is useful in the digestion and absorption of the foodstuffs in the small intestine. And the endocrine pancreas, it deals with the release of various hormones like insulin, glucagon and somatostatin. Now here in this figure we can see histology of functional unit of the pancreas which shows presence of SNR cells and the centro SNR cells. Now the SNR cells, it contains zymogen granules, it synthesizes and secretes enzyme inside the lumen and it also secretes various electrolytes like bicarbonate inside the lumen. From this secretion, it travels through the duct and it is modified by the activity of the ductal cells. SNR cells and centro SNR cells, they synthesize and secrete various enzymes, pancreatic enzymes inside the lumen of the duct. They also secrete various electrolytes inside the duct and it forms pancreatic juice which travels through the duct and it is modified by the activity of the ductal cells. Now various intercalated duct, they empty pancreatic juice inside the main pancreatic duct. Now this main pancreatic duct, it is known as duct of Virsang which travels from the tail of the pancreas up to the head of the pancreas and it becomes continuous with the hepatic duct and forms hepatopancreatic duct and the opening of the hepatopancreatic duct it is guarded by a sphincter which is known as sphincter of OD. Accessory pancreatic duct whenever it is present it opens inside the first part of the duodenum and this is known as duct of Santorini. Blood supply and now supply to the pancreas. Blood supply is through superior and inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery. Venous drainage is through portal system. Lymphatic drainage is through celiac and superior mesenteric lymph nodes. Now supply is through autonomic nervous system. Sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous supply. Parasympathetic supply is through vagus nerve. Now let's understand pancreatic juice composition and its functions. Daily secretion of pancreatic juice is 1.2 to 1.5 liter or 1200 to 1500 ml per day. It is transparent and colorless fluid. It is isotonic to plasma. Specific gravity is 1.010 to 1.018 and pH is 7.8 to 8.4 that is alkaline fluid. Pancreatic juice, it contains 99.5% water and 0.5% solids. Now solids, they are of two types, organic solids as well as the inorganic solids. Organic solids, these are the various enzymes. Pancreatic enzymes are amylase, lipase, various proteases, phospholipase and trypsin inhibitors. Various proteolytic enzymes, they are secreted in the inactive form. Inorganic substances, these are the various electrolytes cations like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium and zinc and N ions like bicarbonate, chloride, phosphates and sulfates. Now first of all, inorganic substances or the electrolytes in pancreatic juice. 
so snr as well as the centro snr cells they secrete electrolytes inside the ducts and also the ductal cells they secrete sodium potassium bicarbonate and chloride now ductal cells there are two type extra lobular ductal cells and the main ductal cells extra lobular ductal cells they secrete sodium potassium bicarbonate and chloride and in the main duct reabsorption of the bicarbonate as well as the secretion of the chloride occurs and reabsorption of the water occurs so when secretion rate increases then it decreases reabsorption of the bicarbonate so bicarbonate concentration increases with the increase in the rate of secretion and chloride ions they are secreted in the main duct so with the increase in the rate of the secretion chloride ion concentration decreases remaining components sodium as well as the potassium concentration it remains constant with the change in the rate of secretion various organic substances or pancreatic enzymes first of all pancreatic alpha amylase it is secreted in the inactive form and it is stable at the ph of 4 to 11 molecular weight is 4500 dalton and its function is it splits alpha 14 glycosidic bond of the starch and it digests starch and form disaccharide maltose various lipolytic enzyme present in the pancreatic juice they are pancreatic lipase cholesterol ester hydrolase and the phospholipase a2 pancreatic lipase it is active at the ph of the 7 to 9 and it hydrolyzes natural fats to glycerol esters and fatty acids cholesterol ester hydrolase it converts cholesterol ester to cholesterol and phospholipase a2 it is secreted in the inactive form and it is converted into the active form by the trypsin it split fatty acid of lecithin and it forms lysolecithin and it produces damage to the cell membrane in the conditions like acute pancreatitis activation of the phospholipase a2 it gradually produces more damage to the cell membranes in the pancreas pancreatic proteolytic enzyme includes three endopeptidases and two exopeptidases now endopeptidases they are trypsin chymotrypsin and elastase and exopeptidases they are carboxypeptidase a and b now trypsin is the most powerful proteolytic enzyme of the pancreatic juice and it is secreted in the inactive form trypsinogen trypsinogen it is converted into the trypsin in the presence of the enzyme enterokinase now trypsin itself activate formation of the trypsin from the trypsinogen and this is known as autocatalytic action of the trypsin trypsin hydrolyzes proteins into proteases and polypeptides chymotrypsin it is also secreted in the inactive form chymotrypsinogen and it is activated by trypsin it hydrolyzes proteins into small polypeptides elastase it is secreted as proelastase that is inactive form which is activated by trypsin and it digest elastin nucleases they split nucleic acids of ribose and deoxyribose type into nucleotides carboxypeptidase a and b they are secreted as pro carboxypeptidase a and b as inactive form and they are activated by enterokinase and trypsin now carboxypeptidase a it cleaves the carboxy terminal amino acids that have aromatic or branch aliphatic side chains and carboxypeptidase b it cleaves the carboxy terminal amino acids that have basic side chains now functions of pancreatic juice pancreatic juice it serves two main functions digestive function and the neutralizing function so pancreatic juice is the major source of the digestive enzymes so digestion of the proteins carbohydrates fats and the nucleic acid occur by the pancreatic juice neutralizing function it is also important so pancreatic juice it neutralizes the gastric hcl in the chyme that enters the duodenum because pancreatic juice it contains large amount of the bicarbonate and it is helpful in the neutralization of the gastric hcl present inside the duodenum regulation of secretion of pancreatic juice pancreatic juice secretion it can be described in three phases 
cephalic phase, gastric phase and intestinal phase. And it is increased by various stimuli like the condition stimuli, taste of the food, smell of the food and even thought of the food and unconditional stimuli like presence of the food in the mouth. It increases activity of the vagus nerve and the response is the lethal secretion of the pancreatic juice as well as the bicarbonate. Gastric phase of the pancreatic secretion it starts when food enters inside the stomach and gradually it is converted into the chyme and it produces distension of stomach and product of the protein digestion like the amino acid and peptides as well as the low pH of the chyme inside the duodenum it initiates gastric phase of the pancreatic secretion and it is mediated by neural control and humoral control. Neural control it is mediated by the stimulation of the vagus nerve and chemical control is by release of the hormone gastrin as well as the secretin. Vagus nerve stimulation it produces low volume of the pancreatic juice which contain bicarbonates as well as the enzyme. Gastrin it increases pancreatic ju juice secretion with the low volume and high enzyme secretion is present and secretin it increases large amount of the aqueous secretion with high amount of the bicarbonate secretion. Intestinal phase of the pancreatic secretion starts when chyme enters inside the small intestine. So whenever chyme is present inside the duodenum and jejunum, it increases release of various hormonal substances like secretin and cholecystokinin which increases secretion of the enzyme as well as the aqueous component of the pancreatic juice and this is known as intestinal phase of the pancreatic secretion. So in intestinal phase of the pancreatic juice secretion, secretin as well as the cholecystokinin they are released. So now I am going to give you information about the secretin as well as the cholecystokinin. Secretin it is secreted by the S cell in the duodenum and the jejunum and the stimulation is through low pH. pH usually less than 4.5 is the stimulant for the release of the hormone secretin. Secretin increases secretion of the pancreatic juice which is rich in the bicarbonate. It stimulates bile secretion and potentiates effect of the cholecystokinin on pancreas and along with the cholecystokinin it prevents gastric emptying. So whenever acid of the chyme is present inside the duodenum, it stimulates chemoreceptor inside the duodenum and through short and the long reflexes it stimulates endocrinal as cells which increases release of the secretin. So plasma secretin level increases which act on the pancreatic acinar cells and it increases secretion of the bicarbonate rich fluid and it enters inside the duodenum which neutralizes acid. So it decreases acid content in the duodenum and through the negative feedback mechanism it decreases release of secretin. Cholecystokinin it is secreted by the eye cells inside the duodenum and the jejunum and the stimulation is by the product of the protein digestion inside the duodenum and jejunum which increases release of the cholecystokinin. Now cholecystokinin it increases release of the pancreatic juice which is rich in enzyme. It produces contraction of the gallbladder and increases release of bile and this action is known as cholecystokinin action of the cholecystokinin. It potentiates effect of the secretin on the pancreatic juice secretion. Now cholecystokinin it inhibits gastric motility and decreases gastric emptying but it increases motility of intestine. Cholecystokinin also exerts trophic effect on pancreas. So here we can see the summary of the regulation of the pancreatic juice secretion. So whenever product of the protein digestion they are present they stimulate eye cells inside the duodenum which increases release of the cholecystokinin and cholecystokinin acts on the SNR cell of the pancreas and through IP3 DAG pathway it increases serum calcium and it increases release of the pancreatic juice which is rich in enzyme and this action is potentiated by the acetylcholine as well as the secretin. Whenever acid is present inside the duodenum which is present in the chyme it stimulates S cells and S cells releases secretin. Secretin it acts on the ductal cell and through increase in the cyclic AMP it increases release of the pancreatic juice which is rich in aqueous secretion which contains more amount of the sodium and bicarbonate 
and this action it is potentiated by acetylcholine and cholecystokinin. Now let us summarize regulation of the pancreatic juice secretion. So pancreatic juice secretion it is regulated by three phases cephalic phase, gastric phase and intestinal phase. Cephalic phase it depends on the psychic stimuli like the smell of food, taste of food and various unconditioned stimuli like the presence of the food in the mouth it increases stimulation of the vagus nerve and increases release of the pancreatic juice. Gastric phase it starts whenever food arrives inside the stomach which produces distension of the stomach and product of the protein digestion which increases release of the gastrin as well as the stimulation of the vagus nerve it increases release of the pancreatic juice when chyme enters inside the duodenum then it stimulates release of the secretin and product of the protein digestion it increases release of the cholecystokinin which enters inside the general circulation and it stimulates acinar cells of the pancreas and it increases release of the pancreatic juice secretin it increases release of the pancreatic juice which is rich in bicarbonate and cholecystokinin it increases release of the pancreatic juice which is rich in enzymes now it is time to understand about various function tests to diagnose diseases of pancreas and to understand about the disorders of pancreas pancreas function tests it give information about the functions of the pancreas and they are useful to diagnose various disorders of pancreas first of all estimation of the serum amylase test so normal level of the serum amylase is 50 to 120 unit per liter and it is markedly raised in the patient with the acute pancreatitis fecal fat excretion test fecal fat it is split by the pancreatic lipases into glycerol and fatty acids now normal fat excretion it is 5 to 6 gram per day but in the patient with a pancreatic insufficiency it may increase up to 40 to 50 gram per day because of the lipid indigestion lunth test it is for the assessment of the trypsin activity in the pancreatic juice so trypsin activity whenever it is less than 6 international unit per liter it indicates pancreatic exocrine insufficiency so estimation of the serum amylase test fecal fat excretion test as well as the lunth test they are useful to diagnose this order of pancreas secretin and cholecystokinin stimulation test it also gives information about the function of the pancreas so in this test intravenous injection of the secretin as well as the cholecystokinin they are given to the patient and the response is assessed here we can see the normal response of the intravenous injection of the cholecystokinin as well as the secretin so when intravenous injection of the secretin is given it increases volume of the pancreatic juice it increases bicarbonate content of the pancreatic juice and the enzymatic component it is less but whenever cholecystokinin it is injected there is slight increase in the volume with a slight increase in the bicarbonate content of the pancreatic juice but there is marked increase in the enzymatic component of the pancreatic juice it is observed in the patient with the obstruction of the pancreatic duct as well as in the patient with the pancreatitis there is marked decrease in the bicarbonate as well as the enzymatic secretion in the pancreatic juice is present now let's study various disorders of pancreas first of all acute pancreatitis so acute pancreatitis is acute inflammatory disease of pancreas and it results from autodigestion of the pancreatic tissue by the proteolytic enzyme because of the obstruction of the pancreatic duct or because of the various infections it results in the activation of the pancreatic enzyme in the pancreatic duct itself which produces autodigestion of the pancreas and it results in acute pancreatitis in the chronic pancreatitis slow destruction of the pancreatic tissue it decreases pancreatic juice secretion and the progressive disease gradually decreases islets of the Langerhans which gradually develops diabetes mellitus and decrease in the digestive juice secretion it produces digestive disturbances cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder and it is developed because of the mutation in the CFTR gene 
The CFTR is the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene which is located on the chromosome 7. So major defect lies in the chloride channel abnormality and because of this it produces exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. It also involves lungs as well as the respiratory system which produces frequent lung infections. Pancreatectomy is the total removal of the pancreas and it is usually indicated in the patient with the carcinoma pancreas. So whenever pancreas it is removed totally then it results in the endocrine insufficiency and the exocrine insufficiency. Endocrine insufficiency it is because of the decrease in the secretion of insulin and glucagon which produces disease diabetes mellitus and exocrine insufficiency because of the absence secretion of the pancreatic juice which produces tetoria and the fat malabsorption and increase in the fecal nitrogen content. Now digestive disturbances due to pancreatic insufficiency causes loss of approximately 30 percentage of the caloric value of the food ingested which shows importance of the pancreas in the digestion process.